originated in India and went on to dominate the Western interiors and fashion. Yet this humble fabric remains a chapter from the Indian history we seldom hear about. Namaste. My name is Mitra and I welcome you to Tejomai Bharat, the dazzling India, a channel to discover Bharat afresh. My commitment to you is that you leave here with facts, resources, information that will give you a new view, a new perspective of looking at our grand civilization. If you enjoy the content on this channel, make sure you leave a comment, hit the subscribe button, as well as share it with at least one other person. On our Crafty Wednesday sessions, the guidance for this particular series comes from the young and enterprising Malvika, who is passionate about the Indian handicrafts. She's also the brains behind the popular Instagram handle, Indian Craft Hunt. So make sure you go and follow her on Instagram. Now coming to this fabric that sparked a revolution in global fashion, you see, Bharat's textile innovations and their influence on fashion, trade and the industry were very widespread, even in places as far as Cairo, Japan, Sumatra, London and Ottawa. They were the luxury fabric of their day, desired by all, and it was one of the greatest inventions that drew foreigners to India's shores, hungry for more. Chins was one such prized possession. We're going to look at the story of chins in the next few episodes. But before we jump into how it revolutionized trade and fashion, we need to spend a little bit of time trying to understand what made it so luxurious and desirable. How was it produced? Today, although it might largely be associated with the cutesy armchairs and wallpaper, it is in its truest form a very prized possession. So prized, in fact, that it changed the course of history. Unfortunately, it was for the worse from the Indian perspective. Now, nations around the world wanted the Indian chins because it was uniquely bright and it had beautiful patterning. You see, chins was originally a woodblock printed, painted or stained calico that was produced in Golconda, Hyderabad. The skilled craftspeople of Bharat had perfected the complex art of painting and printing cotton cloth. They used natural dyes to create vibrant colors and dynamic designs that have endured hundreds of years. Now, most of us aren't even aware that it is quite tough to get the cotton cloth to absorb and retain colored dyes. The process for creating these colored patterns, even today, is long and technically challenging. So how exactly did the Indian artisans master and dominate this difficult craft several centuries ago? Well, new research has revealed some answers, but the precise science remains a mystery. Here's what we know of the process so far. The pretreatment was elaborate and it could take weeks. The cloth was flattened and burnished with buffalo milk and a fruit called myroblan or our humble amla to give it a smooth surface. The protein in the milk probably provided bonding sites for the dye. Then it was rinsed in a solution of amla fruit and a combination of animal dung. It could be goat, sheep or camel dung or urine as required. Now this particular process was called animalizing the cloth and we'll refer to that later. Then the pattern was drawn on paper and powdered charcoal was rubbed on the paper to transfer the pattern onto the fabric. Once the design was transferred on the cloth, the outlines were painted in by hand. Then the entire surface was coated with wax, except for those little areas that were designed to be colored, say in blue or green, in the finished fabric. The fabric was then immersed in a huge indigo vat. It was a requirement to fasten the colors especially the blues and the greens. Now, after the immersion in indigo, the dye was oxidized in air and the fabric was dried. And then the fabric was scraped and washed to remove all of this wax, which by the way, was reused for the next design. So the rest of the design was achieved by painting on a combination of something called mordants, along with thickening agents, followed by dipping the fabric in what was called a madder bath. The colors you could obtain with mordants were colors like orange, brown, pink, crimson, lilac, purple, and black. 
Washing the fabric removed most of the matter in the non-mordanted areas. The fabric was then aged in the sun to remove any residual color in the non-mordanted areas and to set the colors in the mordanted areas. Long story short, what we heard is a long, complex chemical process. It was an arduous amount of time and care that went into making the chins. Now, there are many unsung heroes of this Indian chins, including animal dung, which provided the complex ammonia and proteins necessary to bleach and brighten the colors. Even the unsuspecting rice water was used to provide a shining coat or glaze to the finished piece. So you see, the Indian artisans had combined skills in weaving the cotton, painting, printing, dyeing, bleaching, glazing, all of them. They had developed and perfected these skills using what may seem like really humble ingredients. And that is their true genius. Isn't that a phenomenal story that we've never heard about? Can this level of mastery and skill be achieved in a short period? Or do you think it's a result of significant research and antiquity? What do you think? Leave us a comment below if you are amazed by these superior skills and talent of the Indian craftspeople. So how did all of this influence trade and revolutionize fashion, you ask? Well, we're going to explore that in the next episode of Crafty Wednesdays. These are our stories in our voices. Own it, wear it, be unapologetic. Thank you for watching.